Welcome to the meditation for the month of Hesvan. Hesvan, known as the eighth month of the Hebrew calendar, is aligned with the astrological sign of Scorpio. While the preceding month, which was Tishri, is brimming with festivities, Hesvan often carries the reputation of being a somber, holiday-deprived month with limited cosmic significance. Nevertheless, Kabbalistic teachings encourage us to perceive Hezban's darkness as a canvas for potential enlightenment. The name Mar Hezban is rooted in Aramaic, translating to eighth month. The prefix Mar for Marhesvan originally hinted or hints to bitterness due to the absence of holidays, also carries the weight of bitter historical events, notably the Great Flood during Noah's time. In modern times some communities have opted to shed the connotation of bitterness, simply referring to the month of Hezban. It is said that this month also doesn't carry any holidays or any fasting or any festivities because it is reserved for when the messianic age comes in, when the messiah, this messianic consciousness appear, then this month is going to have full light. All this light in the darkness of this month is going to manifest. Kabbalists often thought provoking insights into Hezban. They interpret the Great Flood as a positive force, a cleansing wave of mercy and chesed, purifying the world from the prevailing chaos and corruption. Water is seen as a conduit, and in Hezban it becomes a materialization of the light unveiled in the preceding month of, of Tishri. The new month of Hezvan symbolizes protection, akin to the protection cocoon surrounding a fetus in the womb of the purifying waters of a mikveh. The challenge is to transform the mar, the bitterness, associated with the flood into a source of healing and protection. Additionally, according to the Sefer Yetzirah, Abraham the Patriarch saw this month and called it Akrav or Scorpio. Akrav is the name for this month or the sign for this month in Hebrew. The word Akrav has the letters Ein, Kof, Resh and Bet. This word is designed such that the Ein and Bet envelops the Kof and the Resh. This symbolism denotes the numerical value of 72, connecting us to the energy and protection attributed to the 72 names of God. The Kof and the Resh, or the word Kar, evokes the idea of cold, highlighting how the term for Scorpio implies the 72 names enveloping and dispelling cold, mirroring the role of the floods, water, and spiritual mercy in banishing negativity and corruption in the times of Noah. According to the Sefer Yesira, the Hebrew letters represent spiritual frequencies responsible for shaping the universe. Each Hebrew letter is associated with the constellation and planet of the month, and through meditation we can tap into the unique energies they embody. In Hezban, the spotlight falls onto the letters Dalet and Nun. Dalet is connected to the creation of the planet Mars and derives from the Hebrew word Dalut, signifying poverty. When people grappling with feelings of lack, they often develop an insatiable hunger for power and strong desire to achieve characteristics that align with those burned under the sign of Scorpio 
in the month of Cheshvan. The Nun, the letter associated with the constellation of Scorpio, symbolizes falling and relates to the word Nephilah. Nephilah means a fall. It symbolizes the notion that it is through falling that we acquire the ability to rise again, emphasizing the importance of confronting life's challenges head on. When Dalit and Nun are combined, they form the word Din. Din means judgment. The fusion of judgment with mercy and light received from the flood's water allow us to access profound healing and protection. Hezban is a month that has no holidays or fast days. Often called Mar Hezban or Bitter Hezban due to historical calamities such as the Great Flood as we mentioned before and the division of Solomon's kingdom. The key to navigating this month is to harness the energy accumulated in the previous month of Tishrei and utilize it to maintain our confidence and our ability to pursue our aspirations. Even in the face of Hezban's perceived absence of light, by blending judgment with mercy, we can transform the month's darkness and perceived bitterness into a wellspring of illumination and empowerment. And with this in mind, let us start the meditation.